could you please confirm that you can hear me? Okay. Yep. Cool. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, my name is George. Uh, I'm with SoftServe uh, for uh, more than six months now. Uh, I'm an AWS DevOps engineer. Uh, and uh, like uh, my colleague Alina uh, said, if you have any question, please uh, shoot them uh, during or after the presentation, how you wish. Um, okay, so what we will talk about, I will check my screen now. Can you confirm that you can see it? Yeah. Cool. I will try to get rid of the Zoom bar. Okay, so we will talk about Packer. Uh, what is it? Uh, how we can use it with AWS? Uh, what's the main benefits of using it? Uh, uh, troubleshooting a bit and do a demo of a, a Packer uh, integrated with the AWS code pipeline. Uh, to generate an AMI. So what is Packer? Uh, Packer is uh, an open source uh, that is provided by HashiCorp uh, that basically uh, automates the creation process of an AMI uh, or Docker image and more. What is an AMI? An AMI is a, a predefined template, let's say, for an uh, instance uh, to be able to run with pre-install pre uh, software packages uh, and whatever we want to do more. Uh, it's some kind of similar process if uh, you bootstrap the instance with a script at uh, when the instance starts to do some kind of stuff. But uh, the main difference between bootstrapping and using an AMI is that you don't have to wait each time to do the same operation. I mean, this is the, the main uh, difference uh, between having an AMI and using a bootstrap script. Uh, of course, if you want to do some kind of uh, short uh, packages or a small packages installation, it's okay to have it in a bootstrap. Uh, but if you want to install a lot of stuff and do a lot of changes on that specific instance, then having an AMI is the, is the right solution. We can do uh, the process of creating an AMI also in AWS and also with uh, all other tools. Uh, but we will focus today on Packer. And uh, why it's so special? Because firstly, it's an open source, so we don't pay for it. Uh, and it's easy to use. So what exactly is? It helps us to build uh, uh, streamline automation for creating an AMI. Uh, it's uh, some kind of cloud agnostic. It works with Azure, with uh, GCP, with AWS. Uh, so uh, how it works, it works with some provision, let's say, with some builders we will see during the demo. And it uses like simple scripting uh, to create the configuration. In uh, If in AWS, uh, when we want to create an uh, AMI, uh, the process is, let's say, a bit more complex to use recipes and components and stuff like that. In, in Packer, it's straightforward, it's very easy, uh, and it's human readable after all, because we must understand what we are doing. <laughs> At least we must. <laughs> uh, okay, what are the use cases? We, we can create AMIs for uh, AWS uh, EC2 instances, Docker images, uh, and uh, of course, uh, VMs. Uh, this, these are, let's say, the, the main use cases and uh, the area where we will use Packer. But today we will focus it mostly on the first one, uh, creating an AWS uh, AMI with it. Uh, so how it works, uh, it defines, it uses a configuration file where you define everything. It builds the configuration and then it it uh, it uh, provision uh, the AMI, uh, actually uh, in the backstage, what it does, it launch an instance that you specify. We will see that in a bit in the demo. Uh, you specify an instance type. It uses that instance type, like from capacity perspective, memory, CPU, whatever, and uh, operating system. And basically it uses that instance 
to install to do everything that you need to do uh, and afterwards it uh, so it launches the instance it install everything do all the processes it terminate the instance and basically it creates the AMI afterwards so you can use it uh, in the uh, configuration that you need. Uh, so basically it uses uh, JSON format. Uh, it supports variable also. We will not do that today with variables because I want to be as simple as possible, but you can add a layer of, let's say complexity if you want to use a separate file to define variables. It's similar to Terraform. so. No big thing there. Uh, and it uses like uh, builders and provisioner. Uh, and you, you can create uh, quite nice workflows in it. Uh, how it integrates with AWS? Well, uh, if you run Packer from your local uh, laptop, you will need to uh, be uh, uh, to have AWS configured uh, in your local laptop to have user long time credentials or an SSO role configured or uh, federated user, how do you want it? But you'll need to have, uh, let's say credentials that Packer uh, will be able to use. It's similar like in Terraform. So if you want to run Terraform from your local laptop, you will need to uh, have um, your terminal configured with credential on AWS to be able to apply, destroy the changes uh, on Terraform. It's quite similar. So it uses uh, IAM to authenticate. Uh, it utilizes utilize, uh, EC2 instance to build and test image. I will show you that in a bit. And if you want to go further, uh, you can use S3 to store uh, some scripts, to store some artifacts, to store something. So you can also have the, let's say the storage uh, options to have something there. Uh, so firstly, we define a configuration file. Uh, it authenticates, but this is under the hood. It builds the AMI and the result AMI, you can launch uh, uh, EC2 instance with it to test it. We will see also that in the demo. Uh, the benefit, of course, uh, what is it? Uh, if we want to have, let's say only one AMI, to define something not so complex. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's say that this is an overkill to use some image automation creation process. But if we want to have a standard uh, procedure to define an AMI, for sure we will need to have consistency. So we will need to use, let's say, Packer or whatever other uh, approach to have that. Uh, and of course, this is good for uh, reusing because once you define it, you can uh, change some parameters there and it's uh, uh, very easy to like to, to switch it, to, to tune it up and to, to do another AMI with totally different settings or to, to unprovision something. Imagine if you want to have a Windows uh, uh, instance and you want to install some kind of complex software with some kind of complex parameters each time. Uh, to not do that each time for each instance, you will have a configuration in place. And mostly, if you don't want to spend time each time on each instance when uh, it's going to uh, launch, uh, you'll need to have an AMI. So that's why uh, having an AMI is so important. So uh, the conclusion is that it's a very powerful tool, as you'll see, uh, and it simplifies a lot uh, in the deployment, uh, in the process. Uh, and of course, uh, now uh, we will do the demo uh, and until we'll do the demo, I will show you another thing. So this should be uh, what we will have. So we'll have a code commit repository. As I said, we are stick to AWS, so no GitHub, uh, Bitbucket or whatever. We'll have a repository where uh, we will have the Packer configuration, okay, uh, defined. We will have a pipeline, a code pipeline. And that pipeline will create uh, some images. And of course, images, uh, the creation process can rely on some S3 bucket uh, custom files or 
whatever. But for today, we will not have uh, the separate uh, code repository with the separate uh, pipeline or whatever. We will have something more simple, uh, like a code commit repository with files for the packer, uh, a pipeline. And of course, this pipeline will produce our image. And we will uh, run Terraform apply from local uh, to uh, provision an EC2 uh, instance with this custom image that we will just uh, creating using Packer. Uh, any other, uh, any questions until now? Is there anything that you didn't understand or is unclear? Okay, moving forward. Uh, like I said, we have, uh, let me get rid of the, oh, okay. Uh, we have a pipeline, a code pipeline in AWS. We have some repository, a packer and infra, ignore this. Uh, and we don't have any instance uh, until now and we don't have any AMIs provision yet, okay? So this pipeline, uh, actually uh, has as a source trigger this repository. This repository contains uh, some scripts, uh, our build spec, of course, for defining the pipeline and the packer configuration. So moving to the actual, uh, let's say, demo, what we have in the packer repository, we will have the configuration. Uh, this is the... Uh, PKR HCL file. Basic, this is the configuration file that we were talking about during presentation. So we this is configured as it is with a block uh, of AWS because we are talking about AWS. So it needs to do some calls. Uh, this is a variable that I defined to use in the naming of the AMI that we provision. Uh, the region where the demo is happening, it's EU Central 1, Frankfurt. The instance type that Packer is going to use when he builds the image is T2Micro because it's uh, it's cheap, it's free actually. The AMI, the source AMI, I actually took this from here because if I want to uh, if I want to launch an instance. I can took this AMI. This is AWS Linux. Uh, so this is the source AMI because it's had, it has nothing installed. It's just pure uh, AWS Linux. The SSH user for that instance, it's EC2 user, as you know. Uh, actually, uh, after uh, Packer is going to provision the instance is going to SSH into it and is going to do some kind of uh, some kind of script uh, here. I will uh, show you in just a bit. And this block associated public address is too true because the instance is going to be placed in a public subnet. Uh, of course, we can do that if we are going to move this, let's say in production, this is only for the demo, but if we are going to move this into production, then for sure, this, this is not the proper way to do it. We will have here a private subnet and additional block to uh, use a jump host, a bastion host, uh, to SSH from that bastion host into this instance that is going to be provisioned. But for the sake of the demo, we'll stick to that. And this is the name uh, that I choose. And of course, with some local time to know when the instance is going to be provisioned. And this is the description. And the build block, uh, what it does, uh, actually it uses some provisioner, some provisioner that uh, can be a different type of, uh, of provisioner. We will use shell uh, as we trigger some scripts. I put like three different blocks and not only one because uh, just for the sake of the demo, but uh, of course everything could be inserted in just one script, but I will put it like this. Uh, of course, this is, a provision, uh, this is a provisioner that using a remote script, let's say, uh, a, a script that is in a different place. We can also have this script in line. So we can have it here, uh, everything uh, that we want, but it's cleaner like this to have all the scripts 
in a separate place and imagine that if you have um, uh, 50 scripts then it's going to be a mess in this file but if you have separately it's going to be much cleaner so this is the let's say the basic uh, stuff so let's look into the script number one uh, basically it's uh, put a message updating the system uh, is doing the update with force uh, yes uh, it's posting another message uh, that I put it here. It's install uh, Apache server uh, uh, and it's putting another message. And of course it's enabling. And in the script number two, because uh, I forgot to mention this is in sequential order. So firstly, it's going to be first, then second, then third. This is the order that the instance is going to be, let's say, bootstrap. Uh, this is the second script. So basically we will start uh, the web server and we will do a custom image uh, uh, into the HTML, uh, okay, with some cool uh, background. And we will put here, let's say with, uh, this is the Packer demo version one. And in script number three, we basically uh, restart the server to make sure that it's working. So. If I do the changes now and uh, I I see that I change something because I changed the number of the in that script number two and I will let's say back uh, version one let's put it like this and after I will push this basically uh, my pipeline is going to be trigger. Uh, by that push uh, and it's going to start building the image. Uh, actually, it's taking the code and it's building the, the image. I will show you the build spec file in just a minute. And if we are looking inside the instance, what it's actually happening, we will see that it's going to provision an instance here of type T2 micro that we had. And it's going to bootstrap with everything that we did. Okay, he's launching the instance uh, and is doing some stuff on this instance. As we can see, it's T2 micro because we have, uh, we have this, but of course for more complex installation processes, we can switch that to be faster, but for uh, the sake of our money, we will use cheap instances. Okay, so the instance is up and running, it's initializing. Uh, as you can see, this process is fully automated. We don't do anything. So we only need this repository uh, where we push some code, uh, okay? Uh, and we don't do actually anything. We just push and the image process, it's starting. And at the end, when we will look inside our image, we will see that is going to be built. If we go to the logs, we will see that it's starting, okay? And it's basically doing whatever it do. So it's provisioning the, uh, it's connected to the SSH, it's provisioning with the script number one. Uh, it's posting our messages that we put. Of course, here we can put colors to see it more clearly, but this is only cosmetics. And it's, it's install Apache server. Okay, installation complete, it downloads packages, uh, it's installed, Apache installed successfully. Now it's creating a nice blue gradient website for the demo and waiting for the MI to become ready. Now the instance is going to be stopped because it will also terminate that instance after no, uh, everything is done. And we will see that it's pending uh, one instance, uh, uh, is pending one AMI uh, because in the uh, in the pipeline, we will see that status is waiting for AMI to become ready. After the AMI is provisioned, it needs a little time to become ready. Of course, this time depends on, let's say, how, uh, how much storage the instance have. This is a, a simple instance. It will become available in just, I think, one minute or less. But for bigger instance, this time, uh, it's a lot of difference, so it's more time, but this is only, uh, it's natural, you know, if you have a lot of stuff, it will take more time. And of course, this process, as you can see it, 
is, uh, let's say, uh, close to zero errors because we cannot do any mistake. The only mistakes that can happen is during our script. And in this case, we can like uh, troubleshoot very easily if we have scripts uh, uh, separate. I mean, if we have one single script with 2000 line, then it's going to be very hard to troubleshoot. But if we like splitting the, the scripts into small pieces, it's easy to identify the issue. So now AMI is available. So what we have in place, because I will I show you that we uh, will apply with this AMI, we'll provision some instance. So we will do that right now. We will take the AMI ID from here and we will go and we will go into our uh, infrastructure and into our infrastructure, we will change this AMI from here. This is uh, a simple EC2 uh, module uh, that is using a T2Micro, our AMI, and this is the This is the instance. Uh, and it's going to like create an instance to see if the AMI it's working or not. If it has after uh, its launch, uh, if it has uh, already Apache installed it with some custom, let's say website. So let's go to AWS. We'll go into the instance and we should we see that it's pending. And we will see. Because if we are seeing this instance, uh, has no user data. So it has no bootstrap. So nothing happened specific on the instance. It's only the instance itself. And if we take this IP address, because I think I enable it only from my IP, the security group, Let's give it a bit more time to become active. Okay, so this process has been complete. Let me also check. Okay, initializing. Meanwhile, um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, if it's still uh, in in the initializing. Uh... Yeah, I will. I will see if because I declared this. Uh, from I think it is. Oh, it is correct. Is this, okay. It's the same. Yeah, just shoot your question. Uh, the benefit uh, using the Packer instead of um, uh, Cloud Init or uh, uh, how it's called, uh, the um, provisioning on the fly, I think it will it will uh, save us a lot of time uh, yeah, during because the process. Because if, you... if we have the AMI ready, uh, okay, now it should work. Let me look because I think I, uh, yeah, that's very strange. Let me, maybe, 
I have something or not? Yeah, so it's my uh, browser. So this is the Packer demo version one uh, generated today, but uh, of course time it's three hours back as uh, AWS. And uh, so this is the this is the instance. And now if we are if we want to change something inside the MI, we can just go into our script, let's say, and we will put uh, I don't know version two. We will create another MI, and after we can provision uh, our instance with the new AMI that we will take. Uh, oh, so this is come alive also, uh, not the incognito one. Uh, so it will uh, it will become uh, it will become uh, available here onto the AMI. Uh, with uh, with the proper, because this is the year, this is the month, this is the date, and this is the time. So we will be able to track very easily uh, with this uh, with this local timestamp. So, I mean, this is a let's say a best practice if you do a lot of AMIs to be able to see. Uh, when did you do it? Not have to go to CloudTrail and investigate further. And this is the this is the build spec for the Packer pipeline. So basically, we take the Packer, we install it. Uh, we need the GitHub token for this. We will take this from uh, from Parameter Store from SSM, and we use Packer in it. Uh, Packer config uh, uh, validate this file and build this file. And this is the whole thing. I mean, it's very, very uh, few lines of code for, let's say, a complex operation. So yeah, it's no, uh, let's say, it's no uh, hard stuff there. So this is our instance with uh, already Apache installed and some custom uh, page to, to demonstrate let's say the building process of AMI. And now, of course, if we launch this, uh, it will take the same amount of time. But if I put this, uh, if I was to put the, all the all this process into a bootstrap, of course, for a plain HTTPD uh, Apache web server with a custom website, it will take, let's say, the, the same amount of time. But imagine that here we will have a tons of resources provisioning and some uh, third party software install and a lot of installation processes and so on and so forth. So, yeah, this is the, let's say, the big advantages here. We can create, we can track and uh, if we have like this uh, separate repository, we can track the changes of our uh, image building processes. And with that, uh, I'm here for any question. It's nice because it's very powerful uh, what you showed to us. It is, mm -hmm. and it is simple in the same time. Yes. Because you, you can have it, uh, you can have an AMI created in less than a few hours. I mean, with all, with everything defined. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a tool that can make like uh, our life easier uh, to create some, very complex. We had a customer uh, a few times, uh, some times ago, uh, with a pretty similar approach, and yeah, with Packer, we did uh, all the job, and it was very, very nice. Did you combine also the Packer with uh, Cloud in it with uh, bootstrapping uh, no. on the fly? So like uh, uh, mix mi uh, mixture between uh, uh, we having did the Packer. We did bootstrap because it was a Windows instance, not a Linux one. And we needed to like uh, change the password, uh, change the configuration for the uh, Windows server uh, because uh, it would be uh, a requirement from the customer to have a separate password, not the one that uh, uh, EC2 generates when you launch a 
Windows instance. So it was a requirement, but uh, only that part was bootstrap, let's say, to the instance, but it was included in the packer. So uh, the real, let's say, instance was provisioned straightforward without any bootstrapping process. So okay. it's a it's a clear separation between building the image and using the image inside instance, which is very great because you can have a team uh, handling this part and another team handling the let's say the infrastructure part, and it's good. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other question, guys? Maybe someone else has a question. Can you show um, how, how you work with security? Because I see that in your config configuration file, you use GitHub token. As I understand, yes. you use uh, AWS uh, uh, role for, for access to this. Uh... Uh, no. So basically, uh, my uh, laptop, okay, my computer, has uh, configured a user with this AWS account. Uh, okay? So... Uh, my user have access to uh, everything that it needs, but uh, to uh, let's go to the here. Uh, so basically, I created a parameter, okay, with this name, and it contains the token, and it's encrypted. It has decryption, and basically, uh, this is a requirement from Packer to use GitHub token because sometimes you are blocked on building the, or using or building the image if you don't have a GitHub token variable exported. So this is the part. But the security, let's say it's tight because uh, my uh, terminal is configured with AWS with credentials. And this is the uh, way that I'm using like, uh, and the pipeline of course, have role, the pipeline packer, have the IAM role, uh, has permission to retrieve the parameter store. Okay, I understand, thank you. Sure. So basically the build spec uh, YAML is run uh, in the code build and uh, exactly. it's going exactly. through the, this one and it exactly. has access to the SSM the... in order exactly. to fetch the token. So My that... Code my code build uh, uh, project has mm -hmm. the IAM role, has permission to retrieve the secret, which is uh, very like uh, normally because uh, in the pipeline, there is very often uh, encounter when you need some secrets to retrieve either from secret manager or from parameter store or from different places. So it's, uh, it's let's say a best practice to uh, that the role should have permission to retrieve from uh, from parameter store or from secret manager or KMS if you need or whatever. So basically the, then... the, the job is done inside the pipeline, not inside the, not to my uh, uh, Local, terminal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, is doing an SSH tunnel between uh, the agent from the code build itself and uh, the temporary VM or uh, the temporary Exactly. Is it doing? Uh, it's like doing an SSH. Can, maybe you can take a look over the logs, uh, because there I think it is yeah. also displayed. Yeah. So basically, uh, it's uh, it's getting the the GitHub token. Okay. So after that, it's validating the information. It's found the AMI. Uh, it's creating a temporary key peg. Of course, as I uh, explained, the security group is in public, so it's open wide during the build process. Let's say for demo, it's okay, but for a long time, uh, it's not very good. Uh, okay, uh, it's using SSH communicator to connect to the uh, IP of the instance, and it's connected with the, with the, temporary keeper to the SSH and is doing, uh, let's say, uh, of course, we can have a very complex, let's say, approach 
with dependency, with everything, but uh, that depends on what you need to do inside the pack. Any question? Okay. 